folks, for this week's handout, I want you to do two things. First, I want you to calculate some ratios that are hopefully going to be of use when you're going through the major project. And secondly, I want you to think about how to present those in a nice visual format. So we'll have a look at some of the Excel charting capabilities. I want you to use the average balance sheet values for the ratios and include balance sheets like return on equity and asset turnover. So let's see what we've got. Now, first of all, I'm going to go to my variables and because I'm only wanting the last seven years, I'm going to right click, I'm going to hide and I'll make this a little bit larger so we can see what we're doing more easily. Return on equity is defined as net income. So net income divided by average equity and comes up as 0.27. I might want it to click on the percentage sign up here, give it one extra decimal place, and I can do that nicely as a percentage. No pat margin or profit margin is going to be net operating profit after tax divided by sales. I'll click on that again and once again, I can convert that into a percentage, give that an extra decimal place. Operating asset turnover is going to be sales divided by average net operating assets. And I'll keep that as a number. I probably don't need that many decimal places. Financial leverage is going to be net debt and average net debt divided by average net capital. That's debt plus equity. And I can keep that as a number or turn that into a percentage, it won't matter. I'll then get all of that and I've now got all of my year's data. I'll make this slightly smaller because what I now want to do is create a chart out of that. And there's a number of different ways we can do that in Excel. Let's do one of the basic methods. I'm going to highlight all of those cells. I'm going to insert. I'm going to click on recommended chart. I'm actually going to kick, click on all charts. Down the bottom, I've got a combo chart, which is what I want. So I want you to use a combo where we've got a clustered column or line. Let's make return on equity can be the column. Everything else can be a line, 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 line. Now, what you can see when we're just looking at this dialog box is that it's the, it's the operating asset turnover is this gray line here. It's at a different scale than everything else. Everything else is about maybe 0.3 or 0.03 if we're looking at profit margins. One way of dealing with that in Excel charts is to use a secondary axis. That is an axis over on the right-hand side. So let's click on secondary axis for operating asset turnover. And we can immediately see the effect that that's going to have on our chart. It gets everything into the right scale. So let's click OK and see what we've got. Now, I'll drag my chart down a little bit. OK, first things that I want you to do. Uh, let's put in a chart title. If I click on that, I can put in, let's say, JPH Financial Perf. Performance, and I can make that into bold. The other thing, well, a couple of other things I can do with, with charts. I can move that around. Now, I may want to. First up, uh, I probably don't want the decimal places here in the, um, in the vertical axis. So I'll click on the vertical axis. I'm now going to right click. I'm going to click on Format Axis. Down the bottom, I've got Number. I've got percentage, I've got decimal place. I'm going to change decimal place from 1 to 0. And we can see how that changes over in the chart. Uh, I can do the same thing over here. I've got, I don't need to right click, but I could right click. Uh, and it's, oh, sorry, click that axis. I'll cl right click, then format axis, again down in number, and I'll change 1 to zero. A couple of other things I can do. I kind of don't really like this blue color, so if I want to change the color here, I can click on anywhere in any one of these columns. Now let's click on that. And you can see here that all of the columns have been uh, selected. So I'm now wanting to, I can right click 
or I can go up into my, if it doesn't appear, I'll right click. I can now fill this, let's say I might take a green, let's go, I might even go a blue, I'll go this green. This green, and if I want a different outline, I could do a slightly darker green for the outline. That's changed all of the colors. Uh, I might want to do the same thing for operating asset turnover, that gray is a bit drab. I'll right click that and let's make that a sort of a funky purple color there. If I wanted to change other aspects, if I wanted to format this, again I can click over this. Let's say I want to make that line a little bit thicker. I'm now clicking on width over here uh, and I can adjust that back. Uh, again, if I wanted to make that consistent, 2.5, I can click on 2.5 again so I can adjust the width here. Let's go back to my columns. One of the other things that I can do here if I'm going to format this data series, I can change how close or far apart the columns are. So by adjusting the gap width, you can see that I'm making that either, sh either narrower or less narrow. Um, let's say I want to highlight the most recent year's ROE. So I want to change the color of this one only. When I click on, when I'm clicking on a series here, you can see that it's highlighting all of them. When I click again, it's only highlighting one. So if I now fill out year six, I've now got a darker color. So demonstrating, okay, I'm going to pay attention to the most recent year. I might think, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six is not that informative. Let's try and get these, you know, the year data that we've already got in here. So I'm going to click anywhere along this horizontal axis. So I'll click here. I'm going to right click. I'm then going to click on select data. I'm now going to select all of the cells from A5 down to G9. And we can now see. I can click on OK and we now can see that the years have come in as we'd like them to be. Other things that we might want to do if we want to clean this up. I can drag that over onto the left hand side if I like, but I don't need to. If you want a cleaner look, you can see these vertical, sorry, horizontal lines going across the chart. Let's click on those. Now we can see the dots coming in at either end. I've got those dots highlighted. Now I'm just going to hit delete and then they've disappeared. So that's looking a little bit cleaner. Uh, I can, let's drag this down so it's all below the cells. Uh, other things I can do. I might have a preference here on this, what they call the legend. So if I select the legend here and I right click the legend and then I click on format legend, let's put that over on the right hand side. And I can change there. I can move that legend across if I want to make that a little bit more room, a little bit more room, a little bit more room. Now, one thing that I might be tempted to do at this stage is that it's not clear which of our items is on the right-hand axis. So I can go back and say, well, I know that it's the operating asset turnover. So one thing I can do is in operating asset turnover, I can adjust the cell reference to put RHS brackets and we can see that that will make down over here we can see that that now makes right hand side and so people uh, that are looking at that will know that that's the graph in the right hand side so We've done a couple of things here. We've calculated some ratios that are likely to be important. And one of the things that we'll do in our analysis is look at, okay, we've got ROE. We can see how it's uh, been evolving in the last um, one, two, three, four, five, taken six years here. We can also see determinants of ROE. So we can see that margins have gone up that operating asset turnover decline initially then held reasonably reasonably stable financial leverage gone down so we'd say that on a quick assessment of this it really looks like it's the profit margin that's helping to you know, big driver of the change in return on assets 
it doesn't look a lot because of the scale that we've got here but if we have a look we've got margins going from 3.2 to 6.1 so it's almost doubling in six years now for a retailer that's pretty impressive performance so what we do in further analysis is dig into what are the factors causing that increase, that dramatic increase in profit margins? And it looks like a lot of it's come in 2021, 22. So interesting times for a retailer. So that's a walkthrough of what I want you to do for the Unit 5 hand-ins. Um, if you get stuck on any of those steps, um, stick a note in Teams and either me or someone that's a, uh, better at Excel than I am will be able to help you through.